Thank you for having me today and allowing me to share a little bit of my, my startup story and some of the lessons I've learned and hopefully something about that can inspire you also to take something, an idea and make a difference as that's the theme of our conference here today. It was 1987, I was 29 years old and I started a little business up in Tahoe City, California and I called it Carnival and it was a kind of a festival of foods. So on one, on one, corner, one counter I had a coffee bar and then next to that I had an oven where I was baking, baking fresh pastries and selling them hot out of the oven. Next to that was a, was a frozen yogurt machine. So I was doing, <coughs> making uh, fruit smoothies and, or fruit on the yogurt. And then next to that was a blender and a juicer that had big baskets of fresh fruit and made smoothies and, and juice. And next to that was a wrap station where we made sandwiches and wraps. And it was a lot of fun and it, and it was working pretty well. And uh, however, being an entrepreneur, there is this entrepreneurial truth that, you know, once you get something going and it's kind of running smooth, you get really bored. So you want to do something else. And, and so I had that, th I thought, why don't I open more of these? Because it seemed to be well, doing well. I didn't have any money, but I thought that's what banks were for. <laughs> <laughs> so I went to the bank and, and asked, for, asked for some funds to, to open one more location. And it just started kind of easy. And the banker looked at me incredulously and said, no way. Um, these are not serious businesses. What do you mean, coffee? Th this is not a business. Um, interesting that all, each of these categories has now gone on to become a multi-billion dollar business in and of itself. But not, not in 1987-88. So dejected, went back to the business, and uh, right at that same time, I had a disagreement with my business partner. And we weren't, we weren't able to see eye to eye and just couldn't work it out. And you know, it just didn't seem worth fighting over. So we parted ways and I left with just uh, my oven and my mixer. <laughs> and I wandered, it was up in Tahoe, so then I wandered around San Francisco, discouraged and broke and dejected and didn't know what to do. And I thought, well, I'll walk into some coffee shops and you know, kind of see what's happening here. And, in 1988-89, there were not many. Now, you, you can see 12 on, on every block, but at that point, there were probably 12 in the city. So I, I wandered in, and eventually I, I got this inspiration, and I thought, not, they all have coffee, but nobody had any fresh pastry. So I thought, okay, I can do this. I can, I can bake for these coffee shops. Well, I still had the minor problem of having no money, or, or nowhere to bake it. I had an oven, but nowhere to put it. Um, so I connected with Hobie's restaurant, Peter, T yeah, yeah, Hobie's, Peter Tabor, and talked him into, because they served breakfast and lunch, but at that time they did not serve dinner. And so I talked him into letting me rent the kitchen from three in the afternoon until three in the morning when they weren't there for $500 a month. And then I would also do some of their baking. And so he was generous enough to let me do that and uh, gave me a start. And it had the added bonus of having a storeroom in the back, which was my storeroom, my bedroom, and my office. Uh, I'm sure the health department would have had, had a good time with that. But, <laughs> but the things were less strict then. Uh, and so that's how I got my start. And, uh, and it, wor it worked out. It worked out well. It was, I did everything from mixing mixing the, the, the doughs and forming the croissants and baking them, packing them in boxes, putting them in my little beat up pickup truck and then delivering them and they were still warm when I delivered them. So things, things were working pretty well uh, and that, that's how Full Bloom got, got its start. Um, and right from the beginning, I had, I had this vision of having a, a dual passion. I was very passionate about how I was gonna run my business and then I was also passionate about the, the quality of the pastries that I was gonna make. So on the value side, what I really wanted to do was run a business that was based on my values. Um, and those are in, in three areas. People was, was one major component of that. You know, how, how am I gonna 
take care of the people I have, partner with the people that eventually are going to work with me because this was all in my head at the time because it was just me. Uh, <laughs> so it was going to, it was, you know, I wanted to do it in a way that, that was, people were treated with respect, with integrity. When we got to the point where we, we had some benefits, you know, we'd be benefits, benefits for everyone. It would be all, all, <clears throat> all on the, this, for the same, on the same level. We, had we were going to pay living wages, um, a, an environment that fosters innovation and creativity, passion, and have fun. Because it really, there's just, you spend a lot of hours at work and you really want to have some fun while you're doing it. Um, and that certainly we were going to honor diversity and have ways to develop, because as the business was going to grow, we needed the people to, to grow with us, including myself, and then, and then also have scholarships, so in a way that we were going to give back to the community. Another core value is the planet. Um, this wasn't particularly fashionable in 1989 to think about the environment and sustainability, and I'm not sure that was even a word really in that context in 1989. Um, but from the beginning, I mean, we partnered with the farmers. The, the guy on the right is Miguel Vargas. He's our buyer. And the guy on the left is Fred Fleming. He's a farmer and he grows our wheat. And we've had that partnership for a long time, and it, we, all of our ingredients go that way. It's our berries, our fruits, our nuts. Um, we just, we really value that interaction. And then the third, the third value is, in a business has to be growth and profit, because otherwise you can't, you can't do those other things. But it's, it's, they're all important, and not one more than the other. And on the pastry side, just wanted to make great pastry using natural ingredients, uh, a, lot, a lot of organic ingredients, high quality, real fruit, low sugar, they were high, whole grain, all these things that were good for you and, and still taste, and tasted good. There were certainly there were challenges along the way after we moved out of Hobie's, which was six months, managed and I acquired my first, my first helper to help me um, after I'd been in a bike accident and because my truck didn't really work very well and I was riding the bike to the store and I fell and broke my arm and, my, and had a concussion and so I needed to get, in, get somebody to help and so one of the dishwashers at Hobie said, well, my brother needs a job and connected me and so it was just a lot of good connections along the way and so once we got into our own facility, that's what that looked like. There was a picture of the first delivery truck. <laughs> <laughs> and I used a speed rack cabinet that I'd put in the back and then, you know, drive around at night and, and uh, make the deliveries. Uh, there were challenges in, in obtaining bigger customers because they have processes and procedures and uh, had, to, had the opportunity to get a, get a really big customer that I won't be able to name, but they, uh, they, they had a requirement. I had to send some samples up to their office and I had a dilemma because one, I didn't have the $20 that it would take to send it through a delivery service and two, I was nervous about how they would handle the product. I could just picture my, my croissant and muffin just being you know, tossed onto the delivery truck and who knows what it looked like when it got there. So I went to the airport with my box of pastries and a little bag of cookies and I found a college student and I said, okay. <laughs> need a favor. Can you take this box on board and here's a bag of cookies that you can eat. Please don't eat the things in this box. <laughs> and my friend will meet you at the, at the other end and, and do this. And uh, you could do that in 1992. <laughs> I know it's, it seems, you know, incredulous today because you certainly you'd be arrested. I would be, <laughs> be in here. We just go right to the gate and find the, yeah, it's fun. Um, Eventually it worked. Um, in May, we'll be celebrating 22 years in business. We have a, a brand new state-of-the-art baking facility. It's um, now LEED certified. So we've had our greenness authentic authenticated and we're at the platinum level. We have really modern um, European style equipment. Uh, it makes great product. And we have a team of 300 people and growing. So thank you. We bake for some of the best brands in the, in the industry, and then recently we've launched our own brands because we feel like that's really the wave to the future because it's, the economy has taught us it's problematic when we're baking for other people because we don't have the control we'd like to have. 
on, on everything. So we've launched our own brand and we're looking forward to getting that out in the market. We've uh, had, as Diane mentioned, we have a smart cookie scholarship program and we've sent 77 young people to college, we paid out $920,000 in scholarships. <laughs> and, uh, and these young people are great. There's just one of them, one of them is here today. Uh, supporting me, which is great. Uh, they're just, they're my heroes. They, they, they've come from amazing circumstances and, and they're doing amazing things. We have an astrophysicist, we have a finance um, whiz, we have a lawyer, we have electrical engineer, mechanical engineer, teachers, psychologists, social workers, everything. It's just, they're just fantastic, fantastic young people. So they're, these are my people. So what I've learned along the way, you know, be the trend. A lot of the things that we did, it wasn't trendy when we did it. It just felt like the right thing to do. It's live your values and, and put those into place. Work hard, have fun, give back, uh, be passionate about what you're doing. Um, and the same applies to you. What, you know, what, what can you do? If, you, if you're living your life according to your values, uh, supporting people and businesses that do the same thing, if you're creative and passionate, you can go far and you do make a difference. And thank you so much. <laughs>